Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Grant Kastner. I'm a Chinese teacher at St. Mary's Reichen High School in Leonardtown, Maryland. And today I'm just going to talk about, as one how spoke, um, what this experience, this Fulbright GPA meant to me as a non-native teacher of Chinese. So first, um, just really I'm going to run down real quick. My, I learned the most can-dos versus need-tos, culturally modifying my lessons and units, and then just a brief rundown on my reflection on my identity as a non-native speaker of Chinese. So let's go. Okay, so can do's versus what I dubbed as need to be able to. So if you're a language teacher, you're probably familiar with the term can do statement. The can do statement is your objective for the day. I can say my name. I can make a call on the phone. I can book a plane ticket. Right? These are all can do's. But what I learned from this experience in China was that, well, these can do's aren't entirely relevant to today. And so I came up with some need to be able to's, right? And so what these are is that technology, as we've seen, has really played a huge role in language learning because it's eliminated some of these old can-dos and it's created new ones. For example, asking for directions. When, you, when you're in a foreign country and you have a phone and it has English on it, you're probably going to look on your map to ask for directions or to, to get directions, and you're not going to ask a local who you're barely going to understand. You have your reliable device, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, we're, we're inclined to do that. So, but because of that, technology has created new things that we do need to be able to. And so um, and not just technology, but again, from my experience, we can see those. So one of them, some examples, introduction questions. Um, I have a script that when I meet a Chinese person, I run through the same gamut of questions every single time. Wow, your accent is so good. Wow, where did you learn Chinese? How long have you been studying? How have you been to China? Do you have a Chinese girlfriend? Right? All of these things. It's the exact same every single time. I promise you that. And so if I am asked these questions, well, then my students who go abroad, they need to know how to answer these questions too. It would only make sense. Um, so that was just one very clear example. Ordering food, obviously. If you want good Chinese food in China, you're not going to order at a place that has English on their menu. You're going to order at a place that only has Chinese food. So as a result, you need to know how to read Chinese food. And what I teach my students is that, yeah, you might not know all of that, but if you can pick out the fried rice, if you can pick out the wontons, you can pick out the, the, the noodles, right? You're good to go, right? You need to be able to read a, a regular Chinese menu because that's, you know, the best food is, is, is at those types of places. Um, moreover, Buying something, you know, you're at a place and you're at a, say you're at a, a convenience store, you need to know if they have a certain product or you need to, you need to get a certain type of medicine because you're not feeling well. These are all things that we come across. These are day-to-day -day situations in, in the, you know, in the study abroad experience that you might not encounter in a regular textbook. And finally, technology. I mentioned that at the beginning. Technology has eliminated some can-dos, like asking for directions, but it's created new ones, new need-tos, like WeChat. If you're in China, you have to have WeChat. If you don't have WeChat, you can't do anything. You can't communicate with people. You can't get uh, an Uber, at what they have over there. Um, it's just, it's so necessary. And these are things that I, I found out through my experience. Like, I, my kids have to be able to do this. And not all textbooks really cover that. So uh, that's my can do this versus need to be able to do this. Oh, and yes, much of this comes from Wen Hao's, I fully credit her, her Dorm Talk Corpus product, which is available online at Circle, where she dial documented uh, dialogues between native speakers in China with their study abroad partners, and they featured many of the same themes that you say here. So credits one how for that. Uh, so then, my second point, culturally modifying my lessons and units. I've found out that this is a need to as well. M my students need cultural awareness when they go abroad. It's not, and this is not just taking a day in my unit to say, okay, here's some Chinese food. Okay, this is what we chatted. It's making it an integral part of my lesson, or integral part of my unit, right? It, so some examples. The Gaokao. When I teach about school and we talk about classes and the, the experience at school, the Gaokao is an integral part of my, of my teaching. We learn about you know, the, pro the preparation. We learn about how stressed they are. We see these, these Gaokao factory, pre these test prep factories right, that China has. And it, it becomes just, they need to understand that. My students need to understand that when, before they go abroad to China. Another example, as I mentioned, Chinese food. I don't teach my kids how to say Western food in Chinese because there's no use. If you're going to go to China, you're going to order Chinese food. And if, by chance, you do need to order Western food, well, you can figure it out on your own, right? So, again, making Chinese food the integral part of my food unit. Finally, or third to last, I think, air pollution. You have weather units in standard Chinese textbooks, but they won't touch on air pollution, probably because that's a, a negative side. But it's a real thing. And when you go abroad, you need to know, how do I ask for a mask? How do I ask how bad is the air pollution? How do I know if one city has good air, good air quality, but another city doesn't have good air quality? Again, these are all things that come, came up in my experience that w I, didn't, I didn't learn this when I took chi my Chinese classes. I had to learn it on my own, and I don't want my students to have to do that. I feel like that is something that you know, I need to do for them. And finally, VPNs and Chinese apps. WeChat, getting a VPN, 
you won't find it in a textbook and you have to learn it on your own. So when you go abroad, you're going to need a VPN and you'll need to get WeChat. And these are just you know, integral things to the experience as a, a Chinese learner, especially in China. So finally, my identity as a Chinese teacher. Um, this, a lot of, I think it's different because I'm a non-native teacher of Chinese and you don't find a lot of us out there. Uh, and so I use a lot of my personal experience to guide my instruction and my planning, as I have talked about already. Um, and so it's, it's really just, you know, all of the experiences that I come up, that I encounter the most when I am abroad, these are the experiences that my students need to be able to handle themselves because chances are they're going to experience them too. And then finally, I realize that when I'm abroad and, and I learn about China and society, I have my own need tos. I have my own obligations to my students. These two uh, movie posters are from uh, two very famous documentaries in, in China. This first one that Caroline and I read about in our preparation for our trip is called Under the Dome, and it's about uh, pollution in China. And this woman did all of this months and years of research on pollution in China, and she published her film, and it got rave reviews in China for two weeks until it was blocked and removed from the internet entirely. Crazy, but it happened. And so I talked to my students about this. What does this mean? Why did they do that? Why would they praise it first and then remove it? What does that say about their values? These are things that I need to teach my students about and something that I don't want them to have to find out on their own. And then the second film on the right is one that we watched as a group, which is called uh, Last Train Home. And that was a documentary about migrant workers and how a lot of migrant workers, they leave their children behind with their grandparents to grow up in a countryside. And these children don't get to take the gao gao because they're, they're dropping out of high school at 14 or they're, they're not even in school at those ages. So it was, these are both very moving films, which I have showed parts to to my own students. And it's something that I feel like I need to, to show my students as my obligation to them so that they don't have to find these things out on their own. So uh, that is really how this, how this trip has shaped, shaped my identity. And I will now hand it off to Caroline. Thank you.